of mass moment 2 in 2063 by Sack. It is based on pluralism. It accepts the differences among the people on the basis of their reasons and political principles, different languages, religion, culture, caste, creeds, etc. It has another level that is local level of executive and our executive is based on parliamentary system. We have multi-party democratic system where national assembly is said to be the upper house and house of representatives is said to be the lower house. Executive power is vested on council of ministers or cabinet. Cabinet dissolves executive power. Chief administrative body, guardian of people at local provincial and federal level or national level, it can dissolve the parliament if it needs to have the fresh mandate through election. Now let us see formation of federal executive. How is the central government formed in Nepal as per the present provisions in the constitution? Part 7 of our constitution has provision of executive, article 76 has the provision of formation of government, the members in federal executive should not be more than 25, clause 1 of article 7 is related to majority government, clause 1 of article 76 mentions the government is formed by the political party having the majority seats in house of representatives. If none of the party can get majority seats in house of representatives then clause 2 is attracted. Clause 2 has the provision to form the government with support of two or more than two political parties. If it is not possible to make a government including two or more than two political parties in the nation then clause 3 will be attracted and that is the highest number of members in the house of representatives that very political party can form the government. Prime minister is appointed as per clause 2 or 3 should receive the vote of confidence. You know why the reason? In number 1 clause 1 majority, in 2 and 3 no majority. This is the reason he or she has to prove the majority within 30 days of his or her appointment. President appoints prime minister among the members of house of representatives. Any person who is not an MP member of parliament can be deputy prime minister or minister or state minister or assistant minister, but there is a condition he or she should get the membership of parliament within six months of his or or appointment and this present government is led by Nepal Communist Party in which Janata Samajwadi Party has also a support. Majority government, it is a majority government and it is led by Kharga Prasad Sarma Oli. Let us see present executive members in Nepal who are in the executive body currently. K P Sarma Oli, Prime Minister, Office of Prime Minister and Council of Ministers. Ishwar Pokhrel, Deputy Prime Minister and Ministry of Defence. Ram Bahadur Thapa, Ministry of Home Affairs. Pradeep Kumar Gyawali, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Giriraj Mani Pokhrel. Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, Rida S. Tripathi, Ministry of Federal Affairs and General Administration, Barsaman Poon, Ministry of Energy, Water Resource and Irrigation, Gansem Busal, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Irrigation. Similarly, Bhanu Bhakta Dakal is Ministry of Health and Population, Lekhraj Bhatta, Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Supplies. 
We will see some more names. Eugees Patrai, Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation. Shakti Bahadur Basnet, Ministry of Forest and Environment. Rameshwar Rayado, Ministry of Labor, Employment and Social Security. Ministry of Finance has remained vacant now. And Ministry of Information and Communication has also remained vacant. So, names are not mentioned here. And 16 is Jagat Bahadur Sunar, Vishwakarma, Ministry of Youth and Sports. Padma Kumari Arial, Ministry of Land Management, Cooperatives and Poverty Alleviation. 18, Bina Magar, Ministry of Water Supply. 19, Basanta Kumar Nimbang. He has two different ministries, Ministry of Physical Infrastructure and Transport. And one more is Ministry of Open Urban Development. 20th, Parvat Gurung, Ministry of Women, Children and Senior Citizens. And Siva Maya Tumba Amfe, Ministry of Law, Justice and Parliamentary Affairs. Now, we saw who are in the present Council of Ministers. Now, we see formation of Provincial Council of Government. Formation of Provincial Council of Government, you can see. Here, it can have ministers along with chief ministers with which is 20 percent of total number of provincial assembly. Whatever the number of provincial assembly, number of members in provincial assembly in different provinces, 20, not more than 20 percent is the number of the ministers including chief ministers in that province. This first point says like this. And governor is said to be the head of the state, head of the province who appoints chief minister to the parliamentary leader of the party having majority. If no majority, then same as the federal government, it is obtained through the support, the chief minister gets support of two or more than two political parties and forms the government. The chief minister should get the vote of confidence from provincial assembly as the federal in federal government the prime minister should get from house of representatives here chief minister should get from provincial assembly. Okay, do not get confused and we will go to the functions of federal executives. What does the government at the center or national government do? We are going to see it. First function is diplomatic function. Diplomatic is to be understood. What is the word diplomatic? It is related to the foreign affairs. It is related to the different activities or relations to be done, to be extended with other nations with which Nepal has friendly relationship. We say Dautya Sammanda, diplomatic relation, Kutnaitik Sammanda, with whatever the nation Nepal has maintained, kept the relationship in the diplomatic level with those nations, whatever the activities are to be done is understood as diplomatic function. We will see what are those functions then. The first one is appoints ambassadors, signs agreements and treaties with other nations. Different signs and treaties are to be signed with other nations. It has to maintain, develop cordial relationship with friendly nations of Nepal. It makes, <coughs> it makes foreign policy, it manages high level visits, maybe head of the state or the ministers or prime minister, head of the government. The next function is administrative function. It is all related to administration. It is maintaining law and order in the nation to establish coordination among the different ministries, different departments for providing the facilities and services to the people. It gives announcement, direction, notice, information or awareness to the people. It recommends for, 
it recommends for or suggest for the appointment of various constitutional bodies and other organizations. It makes appointment in high ranking officials in civil service, cooperations and security forces. You know cooperations is the business organization in which the government has its investment. We will see further more regarding the functions of federal executive. The next important function is financial functions. In financial function, the government prepares the budget. Budget is the estimated income and expenditure for upcoming fiscal year. It imposes taxes. It decides what are the taxes will be and what percentage of the taxes will be there in the nation and it collects the tax. Government mobilizes the amount for state treasure, whatever the amount is there in the state treasure from that state treasure, government has the authority, cabinet or council of ministers or the executive has the power to use it. It takes loan from donor agencies and donor nations. It executes budget, it brings budget into practice. The next important function is military function. It mobilizes Nepalese army. It declares war or announces for peace. It is the authority. It saves the nation through the protection of border as per need. It appoints or dismisses chief of army and other high ranking officers in army and other security forces. This is all related to military function. Now we go to the next one, development work, the last but not the least. So many functions it does. So the next function is development work. Development work here government fulfills basic needs of the people because government is the guardian. If somebody is found to be dying of hunger, it is said government is to be responsible. In democratic, multi-party democratic nation, in Lok Tantric nation, government has the responsibility to fulfill the needs of the people, basic needs, not all the needs, at least basic needs. It should develop infrastructures. It uplifts the marginalized groups of people. You see the marginalized means those who are behind in the development, those who are poor, those who are not able to utilize the benefits of the nation, who are not in many streams of the politics, who are not found to be included, they are uplifted by the government and it creates employment. Government creates job opportunity, it uses, utilizes means and resources available in the nation for the development purpose and lastly, it works to uplift the living standard of the people. Now we see major functions of provincial government. What does provincial government do? Provincial government means the government in seven different provinces. We can say Pranta or Pradesh, the word state brings confusion to you. Somewhere the state means country, is to be understood as country and somewhere state is understood as province. But you have to understand it as per its context. Okay. Now we will see major functions of provincial government. What does provincial government do? What are its main function? In our constitution, some of the rights are defined in schedule 9, Anusuchi 9, there is the provision of the power of different executives, federal executives and provincial executive and local executive. Some of the powers are combinedly used by federal and provincial government. Some of the powers are absolutely used by the provinces and some of the powers are absolutely used by the local government. 
this is the system in the constitution. If you want to know a clear detail uh, regarding this power, you can see schedule 9 of present constitution. There are 25, 35 and 21 different power divided for the different bodies. Now, we will see carries out day to day administration as we studied in federal executives function carrying out day to day activities of the nation main administrative body of whole the nation. Here you have to understand is main executive body of whole the province. It has to look after law and order, peace and security, providing facilities and services in the particular province, in the concerned province. Next one is prepares provincial budget. The provinces have the authority to run their development plans, programs and projects. So, it prepares the budget for that. Budget you know the estimated income and expenditure, it runs provincial level development works, it monitors or supervises the provincial level projects, it mobilizes the provincial police, armed police force etcetera. Now, we will see major function of local government. It mobilizes the city police, it manages park, local FMs, cooperatives etcetera. It maintains local, rural, agricultural roads etcetera. Et you, uh, you can know the locally available heritages are protected and preserved by local body, cared by it, renovation, maintenance is also done, maintaining the environment in the local level is done, local level projects are also executed by it. It collects taxes on the local level for what it is given the authority in constitution. It makes educational policies and operates the institute up to the secondary level. Up to secondary level, it has the authority to run the different policies, to execute different policies and programs in the field of education. It runs local level development works. Now, let us see one more thing. Nepalese executive heads after mass movement 2. You know, in 2062 BS, Nepal faced another mass movement which we called mass movement 2. It was, it happened in 2046 first and 62. So, we call it mass movement 2. I have presented here who are the prime minister from that date to today date. Girija Prasad Koirala 63-65, Pushpa Kamal Dahal and the next, Madhav Kumar Nepal, Jalanath Khanal, Khil Raj Regmi, Sushil Koirala, Khadga Prasad Oli, Pushpa Kamal Dahal again, Sherbadur Deoba and Khadga Prasad Oli. I have presented here on what period and for how many days they were the prime minister in the nation. Now, we have come to the end of our today's class. So, I like to take leave from you. Keep on watching Kalika HD. Namaste and goodbye.